All right, so you've been making these calls, right? Yeah, I think I'm on my week three, or maybe I've been a month now. Okay, okay, cool, cool. The call so far, I got uh, one buyer, the $500 buyer. Uh-huh. $500, anyway, and the future listing that I have coming up before uh, the 1st of January. Okay. So one buyer sitting out the call so far. Okay, and then maybe um, a couple of handfuls of emails? Okay. So that's what I'm struggling with. Okay, cool, cool. All right, so let's uh, let's do a role play. All right, I'm gonna be the owner of the house, and uh, I know it's an awkward thing role playing and stuff, but um, I just want to hear what you know, how how you you know what you're saying and how your transitions are and stuff like that. Okay, so you're using my phone script, right? Yep. Okay, okay. So here we go. All right, ring, ring, ring. Hello. Yeah, that's Mr. Johnson. Hey, Mr. Johnson. This is Natasha calling with Realty One. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing fine. How about you? I'm doing great. Hey, the reason I'm calling is because the house sold in your neighborhood last week and it mm -hmm. sold in just five days. Yeah. So I didn't know if there was anything I could do for you regarding real estate. Um, not really right this second. Well, do you have an agent that you would work with when the time comes? Uh, no, nah, we had one, but, you know, we bought the house, but he, you know, we hadn't heard from him in a while, so no, not really. Yeah, well, do you mind if we stay in touch? Sure. Perfect, what's your email address? All right, cool, let me see, let's see, weather, and, uh, Wait, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm making notes on your script. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, it, here's the thing. It's good, right? Okay. Like like it's good. Um you uh, you're hitting like most of the key points, okay? Um but here's here's why people there's why where it's going wrong, okay? Okay, I'm fixing to tell you. It's it's okay. the The biggest thing is this: you just haven't called enough people to get enough experience, right? Right. Okay, that's the first thing. That's like the biggest thing I want you to understand. That's like you're doing great, but the biggest problem is lack of experience. So the only thing you can do to remedy that is to keep making the calls, so you can gain that experience, right? So that's the most important thing I want you to get out of this, okay? But that's long term, right? That's the that's the macro. Let's talk about the micro. Your your what you're saying, okay? So number one, and this comes with experience, it it does kind of your tone, your tonality, and your speedier voice and stuff. It 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 does kind of sound like you're reading from a script, right? Whereas if, uh -huh. whereas if you if you um, if you watch the videos of me making calls, it all sounds very natural, you know. Even though right. e even though I'm saying those same words that you're saying, it's how I'm saying them that makes the person feel comfortable. See, when when a person when a when so you're talking to somebody and they get the feeling that that they that that you know you, you you're reading off a script. If they if they if they get any hint of that. Then they're gonna, the, the, you know, they're automatically gonna be kind of on the defense, right? Uh -huh. Okay, so that's one thing. Okay, so the only way to remedy not sounding like you are talking from a script is to maybe practice the lines in your head, right, and do some more role playing, and to where you kind of got the um, the lines memorized. Whereas you don't have to even look at a script when you make calls. You just know exactly what you're going to do every time it's time for you to talk. And it just comes natural, right? Uh 
Uh-huh. Okay, so that's one. That's one thing. So you got you need experience, which you're doing that. You're making all the calls, so you're doing great there. You need to not sound like you're talking from a script, and that right there could be what's messing you up. That that right there could be what makes people have that, um, you know, rude kind of tone or whatever, because they feel like you're just another realtor kind of thing. Because if they if they feel like you're just another realtor, they could because you sound like another realtor, then they're gonna have their guard up. Okay, so what you got to do is you got to get you got to get into your zen. You gotta feel. You gotta make them feel like. You gotta pretend like you're calling a friend or a family. Like you have to have that same tone that you have when you're calling like your mom or your uncle or something like that, right? Okay, so that yeah. so that's like that's like the big picture stuff. Okay, now let me let me talk about what you actually said that you need to work on. You went too fast into the real estate stuff. Like, there's a part of my script where you kind of chat about the weather for a second. And see, yeah. and see that part, I know it's a little awkward, but it's so cool. Like, it really works because it doesn't have to be about weather. Like, right now, you could be set, you could, you could say, Hey, Mr. Johnson. Yeah, Mr. Johnson. Hey, this is Ricky at Remax Orange Beach. How you doing? Doing good. Oh, yeah, I'm doing good too, man. Just getting ready for Christmas. Y'all have a good Thanksgiving? You know, you could say, it doesn't have to be weather. Weather is just like the general like term for anything. Like you could you could talk about like if you know like if Thanksgiving just happened, if New Year, uh, you know Valentine's Day, uh, you know, you know springtime, fall, the weather changing, time changing, um, you know. It, but see, like if it's raining hard outside or if it's sunny and beautiful, it's all the same stuff. You see what I'm saying? And so, and, and so, and so, what I'm saying is, is when you go really fast into the real estate part of it, they kind of shut down, because what happens is you got on the call, you get right on the call, and then you say how you doing, all that, and then you jump right into the real estate thing. And they're like, oh crap, you know, like it's like because they didn't know exactly what you're calling about, and then boom. But if you give them a little bit of breathing room. Just a little bit of breathing room with the small the small talk for a second. It's amazing how they open up to you. So that that's one thing, okay. Yep. Okay. Another thing is is when you get down to where you're asking them if there would be an agent that they would work with. When they say they mm-hmm. when they say they don't, when they when I said I didn't. I think you said, I think you just right, went right into, is it okay if I stay in touch? And that's another thing that you need to do a little bit of small talk right there. Because if you just say, if it's okay if I stay in touch, and then ask for their email, they're not really, they're not really going to be giving it to you because you didn't really say what's going on. And so when they say that they, this is in the script too, when, you, when they say they don't have an agent, you should say, I got you, well look. I'm sure at some point you're going to want to buy or sell something. Um, you know, I would love the opportunity to work with you when that day comes. Would it be all right if I stayed in touch with you? See how that rolls off the tongue? And it, it just makes them feel comfortable, you know, when you say it like that. Mm-hmm. So, so make it more of a conversation and add some more small talk in there. And then just keep making calls. Like just keep making calls and keep getting experience and really try to find out like where you're comfortable, you know, like get, get into your comfortable zone. Because here's the thing, when people feel comfortable with you, then they're going to do business with you and they're going to give you their email. So you're not getting very many emails because your delivery is not where it needs to be yet on them, making them feel comfortable. See what I'm saying? And so that's why I wanted to role play with you and hear what you were saying exactly because I wanted because I saw your results and or I think you said something like there's some rude people today or something and I wanted to know what you're saying because I get rude people and stuff. I mean, you can watch the videos where I was making calls. I get people that hang up on me and all that stuff. But I don't focus on those. Like, I work on trying to make people feel comfortable, and if they do, great. And if they don't, I don't, I can't, I don't even think about them. So, you know, I I mean, you know, 
I post about losing a deal because I want you guys to learn from, I want you guys to know that I lose deals and that this is how I handle it, right? But if I wasn't coaching, I wouldn't even be talking about losing a deal. Like you can always, you all, you can always spot an agent that, that, uh, low producing agent or one that's just not going to make it because they're always talking about the one that got away or, you know, stuff like that. Instead of focusing on the, 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 the positives, you know, like the one that they actually got and where that relationship's going, the referrals that's coming from it, the, the, the next person that, you know, like when you call a hundred people, you're probably going to find two or three people that will do a deal with you today or in five years, you know, and that, that, that's where it's at. Like it's the five year, like you'll get to a hundred deals in five years, but you can do, if you, you know, you can do 20 or 30 or 40 doing what you're doing. And it's a, like a snowball. Cause you got one buyer, you got one seller for January and you got 18 emails. That is actually huge. Like if you, if you only did that level of results, from here on out and you consistently you didn't you didn't quit and you got to year 2 year 3 you would have an, an like crazy bi- bi- huge business yep we actually had a question for two questions for you that I wrote down number 1 is sometimes i see a last name that nobody will ever pronounce do you go by the first name when you do the introduction yeah it just depends like if it's a um If it's an LLC, you know, then I'll just say, hey, this is Ricky Carruth at Remax of Orange Beach. How you doing? I don't do the whole, hey, is this so-and-so? You know what I mean? I just Uh just go straight into it, Um, you know. And then if it's somebody I can't pronounce their name, if I see their first name and I can pronounce that, I'll try that. Or if I can't pronounce their first or last name, then I'll just then I'll just go straight into, hey, this is Ricky Carew at Remax of Orange Beach. How are you doing today? You know, like I'll like I'll, sometimes if I if I don't know who I'll, you know if I can't figure out how to pronounce the name, I'll just go straight into my the second part. Got it. Okay, so I'm also for second part of the week for my neighborhood. Yeah. And I was wondering you have like on your postcard does it say to find out your house value or if you want to know how much your house is worth in today's market go to like this website do you have like a landing page for those kind of leads or you just send them a postcard with your contact info and if they contact you they contact you the latter i I do uh just my contact stuff and then i got my website on there i think hold on where's that thing Yeah, I got my website and I got all my stuff on there. Here's the thing. Maybe I should do a landing page, right? You know, maybe I'm behind the times when it comes to that. Maybe I should have one set up and be capturing leads that way and all that good stuff. Um, But I don't. And so what I would say to you is, is it doesn't matter. You can do it either way because if you're sending postcards to your na- whatever neighborhood, you're going to, I mean, this is obviously going to be a subdivision that you're going to cold call to. Um, so, you know, the, 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 the relationship is developed in the conversation, you know, like making them feel comfortable and, and seeing how, you know, seeing how you get along and that, you know, saying like that you both feel good about each other. You can't do that unless you actually talk. So, you know, so my my answer is it doesn't matter. I think it's okay to do the landing page stuff, but at the same time, I wouldn't I wouldn't be like, uh, if I'm not doing it, then I'm then I suck. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, this neighborhood is pretty new, so I tried pulling up their um, phone numbers with Redex, and Redex doesn't have anything. I got you. It's only on the map. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, you know, uh, that might be a good, um, and you live there? Yes. That might be a thing that you can door knock. 
You know, I'm not a door knocker. I've never door knocked. So I don't know what you are as far as door knocking goes, but you know, since you can't find the numbers and stuff, you know, that could be a thing. If you, if you do door knocking, that could be a thing for you to door knock, you know, but if you, if you do a landing page, here's the thing about a landing page that that landing page is just designed for you to get their email address okay mm -hmm. I mean that's that's the whole point is they go there and they sign up you know t to find out how much their home's worth they put the address of their home in their email address and their name or whatever and then you get an email that uh, has their information and then you look up then you find comps for their house and you get back with them you know, that's the whole thing. So, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. You know? Um, it can just be a, you know, a, uh, just a, uh, any of them. Any of the landing pages. Do you have a website? I do. Yeah. See, I have a website. I can actually go in and create a landing page. And I can tell it what information I want from the people and stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, I can create all that myself and set it all up and then send it out. But um, there's no right or wrong answer there, to tell you the truth. Yeah, yeah. It's who. It's who. It who. It's who's most consistent is the bottom line. Like, like if you do postcards for a year and then quit because you didn't get any deals, then you're not going to get any deals. But if you did it for three years, every single month, you know, you're going to get deals. You know, because you outlasted all the rest of the realtors and everybody in the neighborhood knows that you're not going to stop. That you're consistent. You're going to be there forever. You're going to keep on pounding them. And you're low pressure. You know, you're not like trying to force anything down their throat. You're just saying, hey, I'm here. If you need something, give me a ring. Yep. Sounds good. Then I'll send those tonight, actually. I'm ordering those tonight. Yeah. But like you said, don't let the landing page stop you because I'm like, well, what if I don't create a landing page then you can put a, you can put a landing page on the next postcard or the next one or the next one or the next one it doesn't have to be right now you know like how many people are in your email database uh, around, um, probably around 250 that's really good and is it is it and it's just it's just random like it's just buyers and sellers and everything right yeah. Okay. So your whole thing right now, like you should not even be worried about anything except for getting that up to a thousand as quick as you can. Yeah. Through through these yeah. Th through these phone calls. See see if you have a if you have a thousand property owners in your email database that have given you their email and are uh, getting this weekly email from you, that's powerful. That's that's strong, but if you if you have five thousand internet leads that never talk to you, that that doesn't really matter. I mean, you know, that's not too strong to me because a thousand owners, those people are going to buy and sell, and buy again, and refer other owners that want to buy and sell to you. You know, whereas a database full of buyers who don't call you back, you might pull a rabbit out of the hat here and there. You know, but they're only going to buy. They're not going to buy and sell. Ricky, what about the people that are old and don't have an, the email you can't, address? You can't, the yeah, you can't really worry about them too much. Um, I've struggled with that myself. But you can't really worry about that too much. Um, you know, if they don't have email, it's like that's how you operate. That's how I operate is through email. That's how I stay in touch with people. And if you don't have an email address, then it's just so hard for me to stay. You know, I can't. 
chase everybody around. You know, I built a business where people come to me. You know, they they're getting my email and then they call me when they get ready. You know, I, I don't I'm not I can't chase people. I, I'm gonna chase new people, you know. I love chasing new people and getting new emails and seeing what I can do to help new people. But all the old people not old like elderly, but all the old people in my database I talked to a long time ago, they're they're set up to call me when they get ready. You know, and I might follow up with them here and there, like once every two years or something like that, or something. I mean, I'd send out a postcard, a Merry Christmas postcard with a five dollars off to a Gulf Shore seafood. But uh you know. You just can't too much Hi. worry about if, if you know if you want to put it in your CRM or somewhere to call those people back every you know six months or something, then that's your decision. But to me, if they don't have an email, it's hard for me to stay in touch. Yeah, it's a lot of time consuming. It is, man, because the time you spend following up with those people, you could have spent that time getting more people, you know. And at some point, it has to be about quantity. What about, I, well, on Friday, especially on Fridays, I have that. So I call, um, say, a homeowner, and I'm like, hey, well, this is Natasha, blah, blah, blah. Is this Mr. Johnson? Uh, they're like, no, uh, but I know that you live at the property, so should I change my intro? Or, because I had a guy who's like, is that, that was my mom, and she died five years ago. I'm like, oh God, what a great start to conversation. Okay, so I'm I'm missing. My point the... is my intro because I keep on getting a lot of people who are like, no, you got a wrong number, or this person no longer lives here. You know. No, 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 no. Don't change your. Don't change your. You don't. You shouldn't go into the call thinking it's going to be the wrong number. Right. Yeah, don't go into the call. Don't go into the call thinking it's the wrong number. Go into the call thinking it's the right number. And then if it's the wrong number, say, okay, I'm sorry. Well, look, do you live in that house now? Or something like that. You know, are you the owner of such and such? You know, or something. You know what I mean? And what you do uh -huh. is you try to turn that conversation around and try to figure out what you can do to help the person that answered the phone. You say, hey, you yeah. say, yeah, you say, oh, okay, I got you. I was looking for the owner of whatever, 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 whatever lane. Is it, are you the owner? Are you the owner now? You know, okay, cool, cool, cool. Well, I'm Ricky Carruth, Remax Orange Beach. How are you doing today? Well, fine. Yeah, 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 man. I'm just enjoying the good weather today. Isn't it gorgeous? Uh, yeah, well, look, man, I don't want to take up too much of your time today. But there was a house down the road that sold just like yours, and I didn't know if there's something I could do for you. Also, something you're missing in the uh, script is that, or I don't know, did you say it? Did you say, I don't want to take up too much of your time today? You didn't say no. it. No. That's uh -huh. that, that was the third thing. Uh -huh. You got to say that. You have to say, whenever the awkward time comes after the weather part of the call or Christmas part of the call or whatever part of the call you make it, you got to say, I got you. Well, look, I don't want to take up too much of your time today, but a house down the road, a property down the road, I just listed a property, whatever it is. I didn't know if there was something I could do for you. Because when you say, when you say, uh, uh, well, look, I don't want to take up too much of your time today, it's basically respecting their time and letting them know you're going to be quick. You just want to let them know something. You know what I mean? It just makes the conversation so much more smoother when they know that you're not trying to take up too much of their time. And you didn't ask them, like, hey, is now a good time? Because then they're going to say no most of the time. You're telling them, hey, I don't want to take up too much of your time today, but da-da-da-da-da. Uh -huh. you, got, you, got you got to throw that in there. It's these little things that you're not doing is what's messing you up on the emails. You could be getting a lot more emails if you'd actually slow down. So you're trying to go too fast. If you just slow it down, work on making it a conversation and, and making it natural, slow and just slow it down and use everything in the phone scripts, then you'll you'll do good. 
Got it. Got it. Perfect. Okay. So let's uh let's talk again in about a month. Make some phone make phone calls for about a month or so, and then um hit me back, and uh and we'll do this again and see where see where we are. Yeah, sounds like a plan. Okay, you good? I'm I'm good. Okay. I'm gonna be for a couple times and start making my phone calls. Right okay. Now. Good luck, and I'll be here if you need something. Thank you, Ray. You're welcome. You're welcome. See ya.